YouTube, what's up? It is time to get down and dirty with the wiring of the RX8. So we are going to depin, or not depin, we're gonna pretty much cut out this entire harness. All I need is the park neutral switch out of this. Old pressure just gets grounded to the block. Got the crank sensor right here. Got the coolant temp sensor right here. And I've marked out one of the grounds right there. But this is what I found online. So we're just gonna need these pins right here. So we have crank, crank. We have a sensor ground. Then we have the coolant temp to that sensor ground. And then we have the oil pressure right there in the end. And if you wanted to pause the video, I have another page here for you which I might even put as a downloadable. Just let me know in case anybody needs to kind of see anything here. Pause it as you will. But we are gonna be worrying about redoing this harness. Got this fully assembled running motor, but there's a couple things here. We have five ignition, five ignition. This isn't a V10, it's a V8. Somebody split off one of the ignition wires to come over here as a sensor ground. I don't like that. I don't like how the harness is too short. I'm going to order some eight foot extensions off of DIY Autotune. And I'm going to run it from a factory looking harness through the hole in the firewall to up in the dash. So first thing we need to do is cut off all of these pigtails give me a decent amount to work with and then cut this one right up here on that so we can use these which I think we're only going to use one plug here we're not going to worry about that one on the end so we're going to cut it off down here try to salvage this if I can and this one's going to be a few powers which I think the blue white and another one down here is a good power for the injectors and the coal packs so I don't have to worry about running stuff back and forth and it's fused so let's get to it. This piece right here is the fuel pump resistor. It just goes up into the harness right here. So it goes to this one right here. Normally people just cut this off and wire them together, but I'm not gonna use this at all. So I can just pretty much put this off to the side. The reason I am not going to is because this ECU has a fuel pump enable that I'm gonna put for a relay next to the battery in the trunk. So fuel is controlled for the motor on this ECU, not the factory one. Gonna throw in a couple little tidbits of information. All right, so the driver side coil pack is all solid colors. Passenger side has stripes on the wires. So just a heads up to anybody if they get confused left to right, I labeled mine. And also the injectors, I think we just have them go in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they're already labeled. I'm just gonna make sure they go to the same wiring. That way I don't have to mess with the tune or the uh, sequential setup at all on the tune. I will have to worry about wiring in the wideband and finding a home for that inside of the car. I don't know where I'm gonna put that yet, but we do have the O2 sensor in here next to the fuel pump enable pin. So we're gonna keep that on this ECU also, along with a boost controller, so I can control boost by gear. And we're gonna have a few other sensor inputs here. I'm getting a sensor to go where this gauge is, so I can check fuel pressure on the ECU. I'm gonna have oil pressure, which is back here. I'm gonna get that one. And I think there was one more I was gonna monitor. Oh yeah, flex fuel. So I have flex fuel right there. Have to get that pigtail. All those are ordered. And I'm going to utilize the MAF on here so I don't have to worry about plugging in a new hole for a temp sensor or a coolant, or sorry, air temp sensor. I'm gonna utilize the one off of the MAF on that. If you've never ran a Mega Squirt, there are tons of sensors you can go in and out with and programmables you can do. Lots of stuff. So I'm gonna pretty much use up all these flex, fuel pressure, oil pressure, and um, I already forgot the other one. 
oh yeah um mass airflow sensor and which i can do a whole bunch of nitrous stuff and a couple other things which um boost control valve that's going to be on one of those inputs i gotta get all of that stuff wired in just want to apologize in advance this is probably gonna be a really really long video because this is just going to be engine side i still have to make an entire video for trans controller and then hooking the trans up to the park neutral switch on this harness so that way i can't start it in gear or anything crazy like that and get all the extensions done so yeah this will be a pretty long video did i ever say i hated wiring man what a mess but i finally got so there's the crank which I realized if I would have just pulled it through the loom, which isn't as easy as it says, because this is epoxy all the way through, um, it probably would have reached from there down to the crank sensor without having to splice anything. So don't cut this, because it's got shielded wires, and so now I've got to fix the shielding and do the joint, so twice the work on that wire. But there is the coolant. And then that one's just gonna get grounded somewhere on the block. But I have these, there's your coolant, there's the uh, oil pressure. I'm just gonna snip this off since it's brown to match that one over there. I'm gonna use that one to go over here to the sensor ground. So that way the shielding's still there, I have my sensor ground for the um, coolant temp sensor. Everything should be working fine. And I still have to, I don't know. Um, Get the park neutral uh, safety wires out of there. So if I can run those in one shot all the way down without splicing down to the um, park neutral safety switch on the 4L60E. So that's where I'm at now. I'm about to snip out all of these excess wires that I'm not using here and then cut this one except for those two wires that I need and fish those through the loom. And we'll be right back. An hour later. Finally got the harness done. Oh, one of them, just this one. And it looks like we are perfectly lined up like it should be. So a little trick. So I know everybody probably doesn't have a deep pinning tool like this, but the trick to these is you need to pop this little cover right here. Uh, let's see if I can get it back under it. Right there. So you pop this little cover up which that's down. And when you're going to deep pin it, you're going to go into the bigger bottom side with it flat like this. Go in this angle until you hit to a stop, push it down and then pull the pin out of the back. That is how you did deep pin this connector right here. So ideally you wanna put this in the car like so. So you have your pigtail here. Put the ECU in, put the connector on and measure your distance and however you want to run it back to the ECU and then cut it, solder it, shrink wrap it. That way everything's a nice perfect length. You don't have a whole bunch of extra you're worried about unless you just wanna stuff the wiring in here. But we're gonna do it that way for that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the crank sensor, which hopefully I can just clip this right here and then put it on the, where do you go? On the bottom of this, and hopefully this will reach down to where the crank sensor needs to go, down and under to right there. Hopefully that works out and I didn't screw myself over. And then we have the oil pressure switch. I'm just going to measure a place from the connector. It's going to go to here. Um, I actually might just ground it to right here and um, That'd be a functional ground, or I can just bring it right over here to the set of grounds. So, yeah, I might just do that since that's all ground wires anyways. I'll just run the ground wire there. Crank sensor, coolant, ECU side for the Mazda is done. Here's the ECU and its mounting location. Everything's lined up. Connector is on. We no longer need these other connectors, which is uh, missing that one anyways. We don't need that one. So we have the ground for the oil pressure, plenty of room. Have the coolant gonna come up and down, plenty of room right there. And I'll just run the, the ground over to 
this sensor ground in the middle of this harness. And from here, I am going to run across over to the head down by the water pump. It's gonna go between the AC compressor and the cover. I'll put a little, um, I got a little clamp right here on this bolt, kind of holding the wire, but I did luck out. Plenty of room to go where the crank sensor is gonna go. So don't be like me guys, and you wouldn't have to wire anything with the crank sensor if you just pull this to the loom being careful. Wouldn't even need to wire it. So just need to get this tidied up. Then we're on to the big connector part with the neutral switches. I might cut that, I don't know, that took forever. And like I said here, so we'll put both of these together since that was the right length. Put this brown reddish wire that I cut from the harness and I'm just gonna use that as the sensor ground. And then I'm gonna splice that whenever it's the right length up to this sensor ground. And then we need to connect this for the VR sensor and put a ring terminal on this. And we're done with this harness and it can go into the car. So a little tip when you're just pulling this apart, get some chunks off of it first and then grab one strand at a time. That's the outermost strand and you should be able to just pull them right through the epoxy. Just like that. So it's a little tip for people. And then you can get bigger chunks off like this. Let's toss it to the side, go to the next one that's on top, and you should be able to just pull them right apart like so. Okay, this video is getting super long already, and I'm barely just on the Mazda side. So this is gonna be a part one series. I'm going to get the ones I need out of this for power and the uh, park neutral switch, get those pulled out, get that found in the car and I'll show you which wires those are and then we'll call this one a video and then we'll have the next video for the mega squirt. All right, here we are next day about to start on this, but I have been gifted parts from the Black Friday gods. Oil scavenge pump, Corvette TR6 plugs, alternator connector with the uh, 1K resistor in line so I can just put 12 volts to this, alternator should work and Henson plug wires. Got some boots to keep everything from burning up. E85 content sensor, so I can put that back in the Kia that I robbed it out of. Even have the quick disconnects here. TDC tool, so I can make sure the Mega Squirt's at top dead center. And I have more stuff on the way. Oh yeah, and I got some uh, fuel return line 6AN, which this one's leaking, and that's the whole reason that this isn't running because my return line leaks. And since it sat, the clutch freaking went out. So I got to work on that. But we are working one project at a time. Just wanted to throw that in there. I have more content on the way, but we need to get this one cut up. Got an example here. So I use a nice, good quality Kester solder. Use a good quality flux. And that is what you get. A nice, good, penetrated, smooth, shiny solder joint that I'm gonna heat shrink over with that little piece right there. And I've already done the, where are we at? Over here. I've already done this one for the shielding on the uh, crank sensor. That one's ready to go. So once I get this one done, I need to put a ring terminal on this and hook the ground up from this one that I robbed from the harness into that sensor ground, car is done. And here's the harness in its entirety. We have the oil pressure that is just a ground, nice and clean. We have the coolant temp sensor, which I have the brown going to the sensor ground for the shielding on the crank sensor. So that's the whole car harness done. Here's where it will be in the car. And we have the coolant, we have the ground, and running down this way, we have the crank sensor, which has plenty of slack 
to get where I need it. Plenty down here. Car harness, done. And as we see here, we have the park neutral wires right here. I can just wire these together and I could start it in any gear wherever I want, but I'm gonna hook that up to the trans. I have one power and one ground right here, which I flipped those. Um, the black was the power, the white was the ground. I just did that for aesthetics. So I'm gonna use the power on the ground that goes to a fuse over here. And I'm gonna put it on a relay for the oil pump. So when the car is on and running, I know I'm getting oil right from here on the power. So I'm getting the oil back into the motor. All right, time to wrap up this long, long video, which is just the car wiring side. So I guess that's what I'll name the video. This plug right here that is not used whatsoever. It's for the air pump right here. Gives me a good pigtail. That's a pretty big gauge wire right there. That is on a 60 amp right here. And the relay for it, it already has a sized relay. So we have a ground on this side, triggered ground. And the 12 volts is hot all the time from the fuse box. So I can snip this ground wire right here which goes to right there the fourth one from the right i can just snip that off the ecu just a ground trigger for the air pump who cares um hopefully it doesn't throw a light on but then i can use a switched ground off the mega squirt and i can activate this power right here so upon key on i can set a command which will ground out that relay and I can turn on power here, and I can run power from here to the injectors, coil packs, crank sensor, cam sensor, um, O2 power. I can run all the power off of this one, which I'll have inline fuses for each one, which I think we're 10 amps here and 10 amps per side of coil. Um, three amps, I think, for the 12 volts, 12 volt circuits for the sensors. So I think that's how I'm gonna do it, which I'll also need a 12 volt in for the uh, flex fuel, 12 volt in for the MAF, so I can run the power off and daisy chain it to all these things in a clean looking OEM harness. All switched, relayed, fused. So that is the goal. We'll get to a mega squirt wiring later on in the week. I got some parts on order. We'll catch you guys next time.